I actually don't remember the first moment I realized I wanted to work in music because I, my parents are musicians or were musicians. My mom was a jingle singer and my dad was a session player and a touring musician. He was in Sinatra's band and everyone I knew was sort of in the music business in some kind of way and it was kind of in my DNA more than anything. I didn't write my first song until after college when I sort of felt like, well, I'm a, I write things and I sing, I should just put them together and start writing songs. And just totally by luck, I, I, those songs got into the hands of a publisher at BMG. The Clyde Lieberman, who was my publisher, was one of those early mentors that kind of changed the course of what I was going to do. After I got my publishing deal, um, I was still performing. I wanted to be an artist. I was, you know, writing for other people, but it was split. My time was split. I would say that my day job was writing dance songs to tracks, and then my d night job was being in this girl band called Big Panty. It, it really was called Big Panty. And we played our shows in, in our underwear. And then I would go to the studio any, every other time, you know, when I wasn't doing that, and write to these tracks. And um, my first cut was with a dance artist from Canada called Camille. It went on to win uh, a Juno for Best Dance Song. The second cut I got was with Amy Grant. And then in 1997, I got signed to Giant as a solo artist. I think my record came out the exact same day as Hit Me Baby One More Time. My husband played on that record. <laughs> So I moved to Los Angeles, and one of the first artists I had, I got sort of the opportunity to write with was Jessica Simpson. And one of the first cuts I got was, you know, Hilary Duff and, you know, then Lindsay Lohan. I went on to sort of write with a lot of singer-songwriters, you know, worked with Sean Colvin, I've worked with Michelle Branch, Lisa Loeb. You know, a lot of my friends are from the Lilith Fair days, so Tracy Bonham, Jill Sobule, Nina Gordon, you know, those are all my friend collaborators. Then there's the artists that I sort of don't know. So that would be like Cher, uh, Kelly Osbourne, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Music 180 is one of those things I wish that I had when I was coming up. I always sucked at the selling part of being a creative person. But I also happen to believe that some of the best artists are not the most secure. They're not the ones who are going to be picking up the phones going, did you listen? Did you listen? Did you listen? You get your stuff out there. You have the commitment that they'll, that someone will hear it. No one does favors. Like, if the stuff you send is good, you'll get a real opportunity out of it. There's no guarantees, but, but that's a great shortcut. Well, the feature I like the most is the sort of universality of it. Through this platform, you can basically, you could stay, you could stay where you live and still have the same access that someone in Los Angeles would have.